Celeron G5905, a two-core and two-threaded CPU with a core frequency of 3.5 GHz. It also has a new HD 610 integrated graphics that makes it somewhat worth using in an office PC. But even then, you're much better off with an older i5 or even i3 that cost the same and are miles better than this Celeron. Nowadays, most people use this CPU to test their motherboards or to update BIOS. Occasionally, you might even find them in some mining rigs. But I wanna know if it's possible to game on this G5905 processor and actually achieve 30 plus FPS without ruining the image too much with upscaling methods. So, why don't we head over to the benchmarks and see what this CPU can do. Let's start with Minecraft. We are running this game on fancy settings at 720p resolution, and right off the bat we are getting hundreds of FPS. Now I know that Minecraft is easy to run, but I really didn't expect to see 200 FPS on this screen. Yes, there are some stutters whenever the CPU has to load new textures, but considering that we are gaming on some dual core Celeron and its iGPU, I think this is simply amazing. I also tried playing on higher settings or higher resolution, which was still playable by the way, but 720p fancy settings gave me the best performance, so I just kept it like that. Terraria, another fun game with low requirements. This time we are playing at 1080p resolution on high-ish settings. The FPS is locked in this game, so we won't be able to see more than 60 FPS, but we can always increase the graphics instead. Either way, the game is running smooth. The only time I saw any sort of stutter was when I had to change the biomes, which is basically moving from one zone to another. Besides that, the game had no issues whatsoever. Tomb Raider 2013 At 1080p lowest settings, the CPU struggled to achieve 30 FPS, but after lowering the resolution down to 720p, the game became a lot smoother and we started getting upwards of 50 FPS. Of course the FPS varied depending on where we were, but the game remained extremely responsive and the FPS stayed about 45 at all times. Pretty impressive if you ask me. Dota 2 here I was a bit worried because a lot of people often wanna play MOBAs like Dota 2 or League of Legends on these office PCs and I really wanted this CPU to deliver 60 FPS on the lowest settings, which it actually did and I was quite amazed by it. Now there were a few stutters in the beginning of the game, but as the time went on, even those stutters went away. All things considered, the game was quite playable. The small stutters did not feel too disruptive and the input latency wasn't too bad either. Let's move on to something a bit more demanding. Counter-Strike 2 Here I tried various resolutions, but it seemed that CS2 was a bit too much for this CPU until I lowered the resolution down to 640 by 480 After that, the game stopped having a really high input latency and it actually became playable. Yes, we are playing on a stretched resolution and the pixels are a bit hard to see, but at the end of the day, you're basically playing a modern game on some office processor. If I'm being honest, I didn't even think that we would ever see this much FPS in this game. Doom Eternal We're playing this game, or at least are trying to play it, at 720x480 resolution. And right off the bat, I gotta say that the input latency is just unbearable. The game feels really slow, cause, well, it is slow, literally. It's running, or should I say crawling, at 15 FPS. I was honestly expecting the game not to open at all, but to my surprise, we not only managed to open it, but also play it at whopping 15 FPS. And last but not least, Cyberpunk. Now, we all know that we won't be able to play this game on this CPU, but I was really curious to see how bad it was gonna be, so I opened it, set the lowest possible settings, lowered the resolution down to 720p, set the FSR to balanced, and bam, 9 FPS. I guess I don't need to clarify that this looks really bad, but wait, we can make it even worse. After choosing the lowest resolution, which is 1024 by 768 and setting FSR to ultra performance, we started getting a solid 
10 to 16 FPS. The input latency is just, well, bad. Visually, it's a disaster, but I'm still happy that we even managed to load into the game. All in all, if you happen to have this CPU, it can honestly play 2D or even some 3D games quite well. Do I recommend buying this CPU? No, not really. Nobody should pay money for a CPU like this. It's a lot better if you pay a bit extra and get yourself an i3-10100 instead. The gaming performance is gonna be ever so slightly better, but more importantly, you're gonna have an uncomparably better CPU. And in case you decide to add a discrete GPU later on, the i3 will handle it a lot better than the Celeron. On that note, let's wrap up this video. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I'm gonna see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.